Right, what we'll do now then is move on to a two-way ANOVA. In this example then, we haven't got a covariate anymore in that we haven't got a continuous variable that we want to control for. But a two-way ANOVA allows us to include more than one independent variable when both variables are categorical. So if you've got two variables that are grouping grouped variables and you wanted to include both of those, then a two-way ANOVA allows you to do this. And there's a few advantages of doing this. First of all, you've just got one model to deal with. And secondly, you can look then at interaction effects. And we'll explore that in this example today. We'll start off with a research scenario. This data was based on similar data that we used when we did a clustered bar chart many weeks ago. I've simplified the data set slightly, so we're just dealing with two conditions per independent variable. But what this is, is the medical researchers were interested in the effectiveness of two different types of drug to reduce symptoms of Alzheimer's. So they recruited patients with Alzheimer's and allocated them to one of two groups. The first group received an existing drug, we'll call that drug A, and the second group tested on a new type of experimental drug. They gave this drug over a 10-week period, and then after this, participants were tested on a standardized measure of cognitive functioning, which we'll call test score. So they wanted to look at the effects of drug, but in addition, they wanted to look at whether each of these drugs were more or less effective, depending on whether patients had early onset or late onset Alzheimer's. The design we've got then for this example, it's still an independent samples design, but now we've got two independent variables. We've got drug type, whether they took drug A and drug B, and onset type, whether they were early onset or late onset Alzheimer's. The one dependent variable was performance on the cognitive test, so this is suitable for a two-way ANOVA. We'll go into SPSS now then and run this. And the way I've coded this, I'll go into variable view, is we've got two independent variables, drug, coded one for drug A or two for drug B. Onset is then just coded one and two as well for early or late onset. Test score was the score on the cognitive test. So now we can run the two-way ANOVA using the same menu as we used for ANCOVA. So go to Analyze and General Linear Model and Univariate. We'll bring up this box again. So this time you put drug and onset, which are the independent variables, into the fixed factors box. And it doesn't matter which order they go in. Test score can go over to the dependent variables box. We've got no covariates to deal with this time. Just to say at this point, um, you can have a design with more than one independent variable and one or more covariates. You can theoretically enter as many of these as you like, but what you want to do is keep it as simple as you can, depending on the data you've got. If you start including loads and loads of covariates and loads and loads of independent variables, obviously interpretation is just going to become a bit of a nightmare. So we've got a nice, simple two-way design here. We'll stick with that. We'll select some options. Let's go to plots. Right, this brings up the plots table, and this will just give you a visual representation of the data for a two-way ANOVA. You can, if you don't like these plots, because not everyone does, if you don't like them, you can always just use a clustered bar chart. Go back to, was it week one or week two? One of the first weeks we went through a clustered bar chart, and that will show you pretty much the same thing, but in a format that you might prefer the look of. We'll just stick to plots for this example. So we put drug in horizontal axis, onset in separate lines. Remember to click on this add button and it will just tell you that it's added it then. Click on continue and then go down to options. And we'll select the same options that we did for the ANCOVA. So descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. And what we'll do is move this time, drug onset and drug by onset into this display means box. 
uh, click on continue and then we're ready to run the two-way anover then so click on OK so we get the descriptive statistics first of all in the output you can have a look at those I've also selected the means from the other table as well and I'll use those to go through the means because I just prefer the structure of those in SPSS it makes more intuitive sense We'll look at the Levine's test. That's not significant again. So we do, we've got equal variances. We don't have to worry. So we'll skip to the main output table. As with the ANCOVA, you can ignore the top two lines. What we're interested in is the main effect of drug, the main effect of onset, and the interaction between the inter independent variables. So the first main effect to focus on will be drug, which is the, this line here. To pick out the information we need in the table, we do F, which is, this time is the degrees of freedom for drug and the error degrees of freedom again. F equals 5.58. The p-value is 0 0.027, and eta squared is 0.19. So that's a large effect and a significant effect of drug. Go to the next line then, and this is the second independent variable, onset. What we can work out from this is the F, which is based on the degrees of freedom 1 and 24 again. This F is now 14.43. P-value equals 0 0.001. You'll notice it's exactly 0 0.001, so you wouldn't report this as less than. you just report it as equals. Effect size, eta squared equals 0.38. And then finally, we'll go to the interaction. So this third line now is the drug by onset interaction. So F for this one again, is based on 1 and 24 degrees of freedom. The F value is 9.40. P is 0 0.005. And eta squared is 0.28. So broadly, what we can make out from this is we've got two significant main effects and one significant interaction effect. And they're all quite large effect sizes. So something's clearly going on here, both with the main effects and the interaction. We'll just explore the main effects in slightly further detail then. We'll bring up these mean scores here. The mean score for drug type is shown here, and you can see that the, for drug B, there was a higher score on the cognitive test compared to drug A. And this was, we know this was significant from the main effect because there's just two, two groups. So drug B was more effective than drug A. For onset, early onset patients were scoring higher on average than late onset patients. So we know that that's again significant because there's just two groups. And an important thing about these main effects is they're the main effects completely ignoring the effect of the other independent variable. So for drug, the top table, this is regardless of whether they had early onset or late onset Alzheimer's. And for the second table, onset, they, they were scoring higher for early onset regardless of whether they took drug A or drug B. These tables at the moment don't tell you anything about the interaction. And when you've got an interaction, a significant interaction, actually the main effects can be quite misleading. So for the example before, if we looked at the main effect of drug, we look at that and think, oh, so drug B was more effective than drug A. As I said, regardless of which group they were from, which suggests that it was equally effective for early and late onset Alzheimer's. But as I say, that's misleading. When you've got a significant interaction effect, you need to have a look at either the descriptive statistics broken down into each subgroup or take a look visually at either a plot or a clustered bar chart. What we can see from this plot is the blue line represents early onset Alzheimer's. The green line represents late onset Alzheimer's. And anything within this bit of the plot represents drug A. Anything within this bit of the plot represents drug B. 
So what this tells us, we'll focus firstly on early onset Alzheimer's. The early onset group who took drug A is represented by this point here. So that group or subgroup was scoring quite high on the test. And they were certainly scoring higher than the late onset group who took drug A down here. For drug B, the early onset group was scoring slightly higher than the late onset group, but there was hardly any difference between these two. The key difference here, or the most striking difference, is the effects of drug A on the different groups early or late onset, which represented a massive difference. One thing you might also pick up here is that for the early onset group, drug A was actually slightly more effective than drug B, which the main effects, as I say, because they're very misleading, that you wouldn't get that information at all from those main effects. However, that difference in terms of increased effectiveness is, again, very marginal compared to the difference in effectiveness between drugs when you just look at the late onset group. So from that, you can see that even with a two by two interaction, where we've got two conditions in each of the independent variables, you can interpret that in a number of different ways. You can look at the effects of drug type via onset or the effects of onset via drug type. So if you wanted to write this up, you could write it as something like this. So what we've got is a significant main effect of drug with the test statistics. If it's significant and there's only two groups to compare, then you can interpret that as well via the mean scores. So you could say that patients who took drug B had higher mean scores compared with those who took drug A. There was a significant main effect of onset type. So patients with early onset Alzheimer's had a higher mean score than late onset patients. And there was an additional significant interaction effect. And when you've got this, you really want to focus on the interaction. It's the most interesting and most meaningful analysis that you can do. Because as we said, the main effects are a bit misleading. So you just want to spend a bit of time just explaining what this interaction effect represents. So that an example for this data is here, where I've just picked apart what we're looking at here in terms of the effects of drug by onset type and also the effects of onset type by drug. One thing I haven't mentioned in this tutorial, because you don't need to do it for the practical, but you can follow this interaction up with what's known as simple effects analysis. What this is, is we've been talking here about some of the or the difference, mean differences in the interaction being marginal and then others being quite substantial. And simple effects analysis gives you a way to determine whether these marginal or substantial differences are significant. So you can break the interaction down by all the separate subtypes and then look at whether you have significant differences within these types. We won't cover that. If you wanted to look at that, it's in the Andy Field book. There's a technique on how to do it, which is slightly fiddly because you have to use SPSS syntax. But if you had your own data on this and you wanted to follow it up with further analysis, then the options are available there for you.